Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Good morning. Welcome back here to a, uh, what is it? Tuesday, I believe, right? Tuesday, September 23rd, 2025, 1041 AM. That's California time here. Uh, latest activity shows, uh, looks like a 4.8 here across the area of Indonesia. Let's check out the Earthquake 3D globe here real quick, see what we got. Also a little 1.2 there in the green circle, green flag into Southern California. Uh, let's see what we got going on here. The Bay Area, San Francisco region on the Hayward Fault, still seeing some aftershock activity, if you want to call it that, uh, from yesterday's 4.3 early morning earthquake. Uh, there's also another smaller quake this morning, a little bit further south here on the Hayward Fault for a 1.3, 7 o'clock this morning. So it just tells me here that uh, this area is uh, starting to show signs here of uh, cracking, so to speak here. There's a lot of built up strain. 1868 there 157 years ago is when the last big earthquake struck on the Hayward Fault and it's uh well average intervals run 140 to 150 years so it doesn't take a rocket scientist to you know realize that this is getting awfully close here I don't know when these could very well be four shocks it may die off and might be uh, another I don't see it lasting a couple a couple more years as uh, far as building up strain out here um but anyway, let's go ahead and take a look, see what we got. Uh, 12 earthquakes, that's just in the last 24 hours. So technically that does not include the morning events there from yesterday, uh, yesterday morning. So that would bring up the total tally to about 16 earthquakes here. And so far, the largest event has been a 4.3 earthquake, 4.7 miles deep directly underneath this area. Uh, the Hayward Vault, man, you can see it fairly uh, nice there on the, on the map. The earthquakes tend to follow the sequence there along the uh, along that fault system. There, it looks like there's a little bit of swarming area here in the last week to the south of the current activity. Let me see here. So yeah, it looks like a couple days prior to the 4.3, there was a 1.9 and a couple other small quakes down here. It is moving up north, it looks like, but then again, you know, we got activity down south here, and potentially. Uh, that connecting point between the Rogers Creek Fault and the Hayward Fault. This is connected underneath the Bay Area. It's been confirmed here, even though it doesn't show it on the map. Uh, there's, they found uh, proof there that it does uh, cross paths here underneath the, uh, the Bay, and that would make it a longer fault system potential rupture here, up to a 7.5 if this entirety goes at once. So watching this closely here, folks, this is uh, you know obviously nothing to mess around with. And I'm sure the folks in this area are a little bit nervous, and I wouldn't, you know, I, I would be too. Look where that 4.3 struck, directly underneath this residential area. There's quite a bit of uh, population density down there across this area of the East Bay. So I'm watching that closely. So, so far this morning here, I'm just going back here on the, uh, the list. Looks like things have stirred up here about 9 o'clock. See how about 9 o'clock up to the current earthquake uh, 1.2 that we're seeing there. Got uh, four earthquakes so far since 9. A couple there around 4 in the morning. Just be prepared, folks. Um, you know, sometimes, not all the time, but when, uh, you know, there's just before a big earthquake happens, we get little signs here, little foreshocks. It may come months previous or it may come days previous to something bigger. All I know is this fault system is going to produce a big earthquake. The question is when, and we're at that time frame here where it could be much sooner than later. There's one earthquake here from yesterday as well. That's on the San Andreas Fault. That came after this activity uh, that struck yesterday. So it's, uh, it's starting to show out here, let me tell you. Northern California, um, a handful of smaller quakes out there, nothing big. Got one earthquake outside of Mount Shasta here. Uh, that's a ways away though, about 15 miles or so to the south for a 2.1 early this morning. Um, Seattle area, some minor small quake activity, including some around Mount St. Helens. Uh, let's go double check that real quick. See what we got from the uh, PNSN network. Uh, by the way, trimmer counts there from yesterday, 184 underneath the Seattle, Washington area. That's Cascadia, slow slip events there. Uh, Mount St. Helens Seismograph Station, real quick. We'll go up here across the dome area, up at the summit. 
and see what's going on here on this Tuesday. Double check, make sure everything's good. Bells are off. I accidentally left the bells off last night there after the update. I apologize about that. So all morning, uh, there was probably no bells ringing. I do appreciate Timothy letting me know about it. Just a simple mistake that happens on occasion. Uh, what do you guys see out here? I see not red and blue lines, but I see a lot of earthquake activity out here. Those are not ice quakes, I can guarantee you, because Mount St. He Mount St. Helens is not completely covered in snow and glaciers like up at Mount Rainier. That's earthquake activity, and there's a bunch out there. It looks like it is starting to swarm. Uh, USGS only showing one earthquake from yesterday. Yeah, from yesterday. <laughs> what? Come on now. So if we go back and look at this, 1830. Um... 1830 all right so here's the 18 time frame 1830 is going to be roughly it could be this blue line here that's what I'm thinking it's not this red one because that red one's after 1900 there so uh, I mean how can they decide that this little blue line is an earthquake or even maybe this other blue area when all of this is being ignored I mean look at all those marks there on the the graphs that's a lot of earthquake activity here's some from the previous UTC time so there's earthquake activity occurring up there at Mount St. Helens still uh, Mount Rainier nothing showing up up the summit one earthquake off to the west there let's go see what's going on there across Mount Rainier real quick <coughs> I feel a little bit better today yesterday was an interesting day a lot of negativity happening it's like one of those days where where your sleeve or your your belt will catch a door handle as you walk by it well it was like that all day yesterday for me crazy like when i was doing the live stream member drawing yesterday i almost tripped on a small basketball that was in between me and the camera it's like what i didn't put that there anyway let's not continue that on to today today's different day new day positive vibes right um I see not red and blue lines, but what looks like still earthquake activity out here. Now, this volcano is definitely heavily snowed in a lot of glaciers up there, right? Across Mount Rainier. That, uh, some could be ice quakes, maybe the very thin lines, but there's uh, some of the bigger ones there. Some of the heavier ones do look like earthquake activity. Uh, I don't see an increasing event out here, but there's, you know, what looks like earthquake activity. If you compare this back to July when it really stirred up here, it looks about half of what July was doing, but there, that's still earthquake activity. All right, let's move on here. Just kind of keeping an eye on things. Uh, let's see, Southern California here. Got, uh, let's see if anything above 2.5. Really nothing above 2.5. That's all up, that's been up north there on the Hayward Fault. Right now in Southern California, a couple smaller quakes around the San Andreas Fault and the typical zones out here. I don't see any swarms going on. No unusual activity there for now across Southern California. Uh, there's an earthquake from yesterday. It looks like Yellowstone got a little spike up or a little earthquake up here. A little 0.5. Nothing big, but that's interesting. They're showing a little 0.5 up there. Let's go see what's going on up at Yellowstone Super Volcano. Uh, here's the seismograph station. There's a couple earthquakes there, as you can see. Um, that would uh, go back here to the USGS map and see when that struck. It looks like in the last hour because it's still red. Uh, 10.01. So just about an hour ago. 10.01. Um, here's 10.15. So that would probably be around 10.01 or so. But it looks like there's two of them. Uh, only they're only crediting the uh, you, the map there with one another earthquake there this morning around three in the morning or so uh, that uh, was this earthquake a little 1.5 to the northeast here of the current activity so some earthquake activity going on but no swarming no uh, major uptick there across Yellowstone for now oil fields across the uh, plain states there and into the Permian Basin Texas area and a lot of earthquake activity in the oil fields. One earthquake outside the New Madrid seismic zone this morning as well. A little two-pointer in Arkansas. Uh, let's see what we got here as far as global activity. 
Uh, the Atlantic Ocean looks like a little bit more earthquake activity here from, uh, when was that, 5.2? I think that was early this morning, wasn't it? Well, late last night there. Looks like just after 11 or so. Um, so that's some new activity, but you know, look at look at the Curl Cam Chatka rocking and rolling again with a bunch of fives. Some deep, super deep activity over here across that swarming region. Watch the Nankai Trough, folks. A deeper activity definitely straining the region here along the northwestern corner of this diamond shape, kind of a diamond shape here, um, Filipino plate. So watch that closely. It looks like it uh, just showed up here in the last hour. 4.6. On that note, I do want to see if it's swarming out there because a lot of times we'll get hundreds of earthquakes like we did here a couple months ago in that area. And you really can't see them on any of the maps unless you go to the uh, official site that monitors the earthquake activity around Japan. Uh, I don't see any huge swarming. I'm looking for the numbers over here that would be consistent of a swarm in terms of the number counts per hour. But uh, there's some activity 6 this morning and then overnight. Uh, but I don't see any swarming stirring up there around the Nankai Trough for now. But we do have that deep earthquake coming in in the last hour. Guarantee you that's putting strain up here. Uh, let's take a look here. What else we got? Um, typical movement here across the Indonesia area. New Zealand, a couple threes. There's 5.5 along the Kermadec Trench northward here. Um, let's see what kind of activity we got up here today. Number of fives in the last 24 hours. It looks like a couple of those from yesterday. One more just after 11 o'clock my time here last night. And so far this morning, two 4.6s. Still rocking and rolling out there in a huge swarm of aftershocks and pre-shocks. I just hope this is not all just four shocks to something bigger. You just never know. You never really know. All right, uh, South America, we got uh, some newer activity down here. A couple fives as well, 5.6 off the coast there of Peru and also down around the Chile area. At, uh, definitely some uptick going on here today. It looks a little bit more active than on your daily normal counts there. Middle America Trench, pretty good cluster going on, but that's just some twos and threes, maybe some five, oh, well, a four-pointer in there it looks like. Uh, Puerto Rico Trench, a little bit of activity stirring up there around that subduction zone. Um, let's see here. Quite a few threes this morning. They had a 4.0 up here across that area. Yeah, but pretty good, pretty good amount of earthquake activity here in the last 24 hours. That's a major subduction zone there called the Peru Chile Trench that, uh, man, they can see some big earthquakes. Uh, Mediterranean region there, normal activity, I would say. Some twos and threes out there. Nothing big going on there for now. I'll just watch. Uh, well, it's pretty active out here across the western areas of the Pacific Plate, north and south, even the central portion. Uh, but also we got the west coast stirring up out here as well. One earthquake off the coast here of Canada. That's at the northern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. A uh, quick glance here at space weather activity. Well... Looks like we had a little M flare last night. Maybe early this morning here, I should say. Look at that. Barely reaching up into the M flare category. Not a big deal. Um, looks like the imagery is back online here. This was offline last night. There is quite a few sunspots out here. This is still old, even though that's the latest. When you click on it, it goes to the official site, and it shows latest up here, but this is technically from the 13th. 10 days ago so that does us no good this is the most recent one we have to uh, we have to work with here and this may even be behind a little bit uh, newer area back over here on the eastern limb of the sun that uh, I think this is the same image from last night looks the same here but there's a couple different areas of uh, sunspots that may produce some flaring watching this area over here 4226 and this unnamed one these other ones are fairly minimal and departing off there across the western area of the sun they'll be out of sight out of mind here soon no major roar activity there in the forecast for now folks uh, there's your flare threat 35 percent chance for m flare x flare has been dropped down 
to 1% or less. Quick glance here at the next close approach asteroids to the planet. Uh, well, well, this one's coming in pretty close. 255,000 miles. That's around the, uh, just outside the average distance between the Earth and the Moon. That's the average. Sometimes it fluctuates further. Sometimes it's closer. Uh, but that's fairly small. 21-foot bus size asteroid coming in uh, today, it looks like. A uh, couple million miles. Wow, look at how big this one is. That is pretty big. 660 feet. Man, imagine that coming into the planet. That would not be good. That's coming in today as well, but that's over 3 million miles away. Been tracked since 2022. There's another big one. There's tracked since 2018. That's roughly about the same. So we got two good sized asteroids coming in. Uh, I, you know, that's that's a large distance there. So I'm not, I can't really say close. So, all right. Uh, what else we got here for severe weather today? It looks like an enhanced area has been added here on the map uh, for some tornado activity. There's a hatched area for. 10%, 10% tornado potential down there, 5% and a 2% surrounding that. Looks like a potential tornado event today. That's across areas of eastern Oklahoma, Kansas, or uh, excuse me, uh, Arkansas. The 2% extends up here in Kansas, but uh, if you're out here in anywhere in this area, just be on guard. We do have that severe weather potential uh, that's going to be popping up there with those uh, thunderstorms today, so be careful. Couple earthquakes there on the Southern California Barrett Station, uh, but aside from that, things look pretty quiet out here, folks. Uh, you have yourself a wonderful Tuesday. We will see you guys back out here for the Tuesday evening update. Take care.